both were positive. But if you remember, a lot of the letters, too, are not positive. They have this against you type thing. When we get to Revelations, uh, the same church is the first church that Jesus mentions. And he does commend them for all the good things they do. But then he says, I have this one complaint against you. You don't love me as much as you used to. And you know, that's a big, big problem in Christianity. Because we get complacent. And as though we can compare that again to a real marriage and see that, we don't need to let the romance ever get out. We don't need to let it get out of our, our physical marriages. And we certainly don't need to get, let it get out of our relationship with God through Jesus. Jesus died for you each and every day. You should thank Him for that. Because He saved you from an eternity in hell. And I could go on to describe all that and everything. But the thing is, He, all, he, he brought you into an eternity with God. Where all those things in black that you saw won't be here anymore. All those things that you saw in white on that writing, all the fruits of the Spirit... That's all you will see. There will be no more crying because there will be no more death. There will be no more pain, no more suffering, no more not getting along. We will be peaceful and united. Everything that is good, everything positive that you can ever think about in your life that you should be thanking and praising God about, that will be all there is for eternity. Because we will spend an eternity with the one who gave his life for us. <clears throat> So Paul starts off the letter with Ephesians, with who he is, who he's writing to. And then in verse 2 he says, May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Then he goes on in verses 3 through 14 to give the longest sentence structure, longest single thought of the New Testament. It's one continuous thought, even though there's not punctuation and stuff in the original writings, this is one complete thought. It's a logical break after that. And I want you to notice as I read this, and I don't remember which translation I took. I took it because it has the words in Him in it. I want you to notice how many times the words in Him or in Christ are mentioned. Because every time those are mentioned, you get a benefit because of it. You are everything that you are, including the fact that you have eternal life, because of Jesus that's why we did the songs that we did previously. It's all because of Jesus. The one you should be madly in love with just as much today as the day you came to salvation. Just as much tomorrow you should love Jesus passionately and give your life up to serve Him. <clears throat> Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ. He has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ in Him. According to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He has blessed us in the Beloved, in Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His, of His will according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Him, things in heaven and things on earth, in Him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be, the, be, might be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit who is the guarantee of his inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the, grace, to the praise of his glory. Now, two-hour sermon. I could do it all day long preaching on that, all those things, but I'm leaving that up to you. Don't worry. 
Study that. Go over that. Maybe that's a love letter that you read each and every day. Maybe you read Psalm 23 and, and thank the Lord for His love. But, but love the Lord Jesus as much today as you did at first, as much as you did tomorrow. Love Him. He gave His life for you. If you love Him, you will live for Him. If I love my wife, period, then the other things will melt away because I love her. As you saw in the video, as Christ, I will give up my life to please her, to lift her up, to keep her safe as best I can because I'll have to trust in God to do it again because I'm limited in the things I can do. I don't know if I'll get up tomorrow and be able to speak or if I'll even get up tomorrow. But I'll praise God if I can and then I will try to live a life that pleases my wife by pleasing my Lord first. So there's two glasses laying here. I know you're like, why is there two glasses up here? Okay. This one's filled with water and that one's not. Same cup, or appears to be, right, anyway? What does a cup do? Holds the water. Think of the water as your life. Problem is, if you're in darkness, you think all there is is this life. You don't think about an afterlife. You think, I should eat and drink and be merry because tomorrow I might die. Because after that, I'm just worm bait anyway or whatever. But see, that's not the case. You are an eternal being. This water that's in here will exist for all eternity. That body that you see, these things you physically touch, feel, taste, because God gave you those senses, they're to recognize that there is God so that you will praise Him, give Him glory, and give Him thanks. But the world that's in darkness only sees their life that's in this cup. It's held together by this cup. This cup is what contains it. And when you're in this darkness, the thing that contains this is your own fleshly desires. Because you do live for yourself. That's what happened when we all sinned and fell short of God's glory. We were in darkness. We didn't see anything different than this. And we lived a life, whether we knew it or not, whether we wanted to admit it or not, that was controlled because this cup holds this water. It controls it by Satan. We might not know it. It might look fine. We might think we're fine. We might try our good deeds to get to heaven, even if we believe it, that, that there is a heaven. But my life is contained, really, in eternal death because it's held in this cup, which is Satan. But Jesus died on the cross, didn't he? So he has removed this water and put it in this cup, which is Jesus, which is eternal life, salvation. But here's the problem with so many people. It might be the problem with you. It's the problem with me. I'll say it. I haven't let him pour all of this water out of here. I still try to hold on to me doing it myself. I still have these fleshly desires because I haven't been transformed. I haven't allowed him. Maybe there's more, maybe less. And I'm not going to pour any water back into here because you can't do that. You might think you've taken some away and stuff, but you never gave it to him in the first place. Because if you truly give it to him, it's gone out of here forevermore. And there will be a day for a believer, whether you reach this in your physical life or not, that this is gone. It's over with. It's thrown into the fiery dungeon forever and ever. And you will live like this. But see, the pro problem is, and the thing is, you should live this way now. There is no reason that you don't. This is who you are today. There is no reason to be in that cup still. You belong entirely to Jesus Christ if you love Him with all your heart, mind, soul, body, and strength. Then that doesn't control you anymore. It has no power in your life. It has no power over death because you belong in Him. You have all those things in Him. You have adoption, sonship, eternal life. You have joy. You have peace. 
You have all these things. But if you don't have enough peace, if you don't have some of these things, it's because you still have some life left in that old cup. Put it all in Him. Every last drop. Put it into Jesus. There is no in-between. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing even in the heavenly places. Even as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and blameless before Him. In love He predestined us for adoption to Himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of His will, to the praise of His glorious grace, with which He blessed us in the Beloved. In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of His grace, which He lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of His will, according to His purpose, which He set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite, unite all things in Him things in heaven and things on earth. In Him we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of Him who works all things according to the counsel of His will, so that we who were the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of His glory. In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is a guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it. All of those things came before we acquired possession of eternal life. To Him be all praise and glory and honor. Wow! Who are you in Jesus Christ? You are everything. You are beloved by God. Don't live a life that doesn't bring glory and honor to Him. You're only holding on to death, to lies, to deception, to deceit, to darkness when He's called you to live in the light. Today we're going to take communion. And it's different than we've taken it. You have your wine or juice in here with a little wafer. Okay? And you can come up and grab one and don't have to touch anybody else's and you peel off the little top. And there's a wafer. And then you peel off the second layer. And there's juice. Okay? Paul warned us. First of all, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Whether we do it every time we meet together or we do it here and there or whatever, there's no set pattern on that. Just like I could take that topic and talk about predestination and all these different things when the point is Jesus. <laughs> We shouldn't get divisions out there. It's fine if you want to believe about this, about predestination, and I want to believe that, but there never should be divisions. And it's not the point of the topic. Just like in, when you get to Ephesians 6, yes, that's great for marriages, but the point about, is about Jesus again. So when you go to the Sunday school class, I'll say this example all the time too, and you, you tell a story about uh, what we know as a squirrel, but what's this critter that goes and picks up nuts and prepares and puts them up, acorns in the tree and stuff for fall so you'll have something to eat? And the little child that's there with childlike faith says, sure sounds like a squirrel, but this is Sunday school. I know it's about Jesus. Because even from creation and everything, we see Jesus. It's all about Jesus. So Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And Paul also warned he said, don't take it in an unworthy manner. Think about the body that lay upon that cross for you, that was whipped, that was mocked, that was spit upon, and then gave up his life willingly. And while he did it, said, Father, forgive them. Think about that blood that was poured out, that blood that washes you all of your sins as white as snow, which does adopt you which says you're predestined, whatever that means in the first place, that you're chosen, you're righteous, you're holy. You have peace, joy, love, all because of Jesus. So we're going to play a song. Come up and get your cup and your wafer. 
and then I'll come up and bless the elements and we'll take communion. And then we'll close the service with doxology. And you can...